Hey scholars, good to be back with you. I've gotten some questions about the binary search algorithm and in particular people have wanted a worked out numerical example. I can do that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to walk you through one on the board and then we're going to switch to MathCAD. We're going to use MathCAD because it's a little easier to look at on the screen. And I'll walk you through it step by step showing you what all the intermediate calculations look like. So if you want to duplicate it yourself, you can walk through it step by step and make sure you're getting the right answer. So let's get started. I need an objective function, and let's pick a parabola. We know we're very, very familiar with parabolas. Now this is, doesn't necessarily have in any you know, physical meaning, it probably doesn't, but um, it's simple enough, we're familiar with its behavior. It isn't going to add any more complication to the, uh, the example here. Okay, so we know what parabolas look like. We've, uh, we've all seen these before, I think, and, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a parabola. It's a, um, symmetric about the minimum point, and the minimum point is actually half that. It's 4.85 is x star, and I picked this, that, that funny constant there, specifically so when I did the first step of marching forward, um, I wouldn't accidentally land right on that. That doesn't make a very good example. In general, you won't, so it's, it's good here to do it that way. Make sure we got it in frame, we do. Okay, um, we're gonna start. <coughs> we need to pick a, a delta x to start. Our first step is we're gonna step forward and we're gonna find an approximate minimum. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna step forward in big steps here until the function starts to increase again. Once it increases, we're going to stop. Okay. Maybe let me write this down here so you have this. Um, cut delta x in half. This is the binary search. Got the name binary because we're cutting it in half, we're dividing by two. So what I decided to do, I'm going to set x0 equals zero, and I'm going to start with delta x equal one. Right? So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. So I get this one, two, three, four, five. That looks about right. Okay, and I'm actually going to go to 6 out here. There we go. So those plus signs, those are my steps. This delta x here is 1. Okay, there's 1, there's 1, there's 1. So 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I know I, didn't, I don't quite have those evenly spaced because I'm sketching them on the board here. When I get up to there, at this point, let's, 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 let's do something else here. That's F1, that's F0, that's F2, that's F3, F4, and so on. Okay, that's F6, that's F5. F6 is greater than F5 at that point. That means we've passed a minimum. It's gone down, 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 and then up it goes again. It started to increase, so we stop there. Okay, Step forward, forward until f of x increases. f of x just increased. So what do we do next? Cut delta x in half. So now I'm going to say delta x, let's see, I, I know that the, the minimum lives in here. The minimum lives in that range right there. I don't know where. I know my function went down, down, and then back up. I had to have passed a minimum. It went down from there to there and up from there to there. So somewhere between here and here, it has to have passed a minimum. And there were two ways it could have done it. I could have gone down and up that way or down and up that way. So the minimum either lives in here or it lives in there. I don't know which. What I can do though is I can cut delta x in two 
and let's see, I'll put a square there maybe. Okay, where that was one, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now I need a point at four and a half and five and a half. I'm going to do that, then I'm going to find the minimum again. Now I'm going to cut the, the delta x in half and cut it, and instead of going by halves, I'll go by quarters. Right? And then I'll do it again, and then I'll do it again until I get to a stopping point, until I satisfy some exit criteria. So there's the big idea here. We've got a function, we've got a picture here. I don't have too many numbers on here. If I start trying to put right numbers on here, it's going to get even more even busier than it already is. So let me go on to uh, MathCAD on my screen, and I'll complete the example there. Okay, let's work our example out now in MathCAD. I'm using MathCAD because it's easy to look at. It'll obviously work in whatever your favorite uh, number crunching package is. If you're willing to do a little bit of work, you could even get it to work in Excel. So there's my objective function that I had on the board. And I want to know where the minimum is. So I'm using a dummy variable called xx. I'm using that because if I try to use x, it's going to conflict with that down there. And I, I would have to... Uh, uh, make some changes to the code. It's easier to just use this dummy variable right now. Let's do this. I'm going to call this x star and I'm going to say f star is f of x star and that's that number right there, minus 23.522. That's that point right about there. Well let's go ahead and put that point on our graph here. It doesn't look like it's there, does it? Well, it's because I only have one point on a graph. Let's go here. There isn't a symbol right now. Let's put a big circle right there. Yep, there it is. Okay, so now I know exactly where my minimum is. My starting point is going to be zero, and my first uh, portion of the of the algorithm, I'm going to step through in steps of one. So go one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to miss that. Six. That'll be going up again, and then I'll start doing the binary search. So, you know, you can write code for this, and it would certainly be cleaner. But for right now, for the purposes of an example, let me run it this way. Whoops. And right, what I'm going to do here is. Uh, Delta x equals 1. Now that's text right there. That's just the, uh, doesn't, doesn't have any mathematical meaning. It's just a comment. And I'm just going to manually step through this in steps of 1. Okay, you can see I'm getting close now. Whoops, put an equal sign on there. Put an equal sign on there. There we go. And there. Now, see, I'm going down until I get to there, and then I'm going back up again. So I know I've passed the minimum. Let's see if I can clean this up a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty good. Hit Control R. Okay, so right there, that's my current estimate of the minimum. I can go through, whoops, not disable. Um, I'm going to go to Properties and go to Highlight the Region, and it's going to come up yellow. So there's that yellow, that's my first estimate of the minimum. All I know right now is that the actual minimum lives between 4 and 6, like I drew on the board. So let's start there. Let's now say equals 0 0.5. I'm dividing this in half to get to there. That's this binary search. I'll go ahead and reevaluate this. Now, instead of 5, my next uh, step is going to be 4.5. Scroll down here a little bit. There. Whoops. By the way, if you want, if let, let's put that back there. Whoops. If I want to align things, I can just highlight a list of those regions there and go up and click that. It'll align them for me. So f of 5.5 and f of 6.5, or 6 I should say. There. So now 5 is still my 
estimate of the minimum. Okay. Now, what do I do now? Well, I'm going to. I now I know that the minimum is between 4.5 and 5.5. Now we actually know it's at 4.85, so it's in between those two. But we know that because we've already calculated it and plotted it. So let's now let's just copy this and. Paste that in there. Okay, now this is going to be 0.25. And so I know that's going to be 4.5. This is going to be 4.75. This is going to be 5. This is 5.25. And this is going to be 5.5. And what's going on here is that uh, Right now, I know my minimum lives between four and a half and five and a half, so I expanded that out, divided delta x by two, and inserted those two extra points. Well, where's my minimum now? It's actually now right there. So let's properties highlight region. I'm going to unclick that, so unhighlight that, and I am going to highlight this one. Well, where would you go next? Well, same thing. Delta x is next time is going to be. 0.125. We can do that if we'd like. Tell you what, I'm going to compress this a little bit so I can keep it on the screen here. See if I can get those to line up. There we go. Well, let's copy that and paste. And we'll line uh, my starting point, which is now going to be. Uh, 4.5 again. I'll just line it up. All right now, instead of that being 4.5 uh, and this one being 4.75, I'm going to add 0.125 to that. This now becomes 4.625. This one becomes 4.75. How about 4.75? There we go. This one now becomes 4. Point, let's see, 875. Is that right? And this one becomes 5. Now, where's the minimum? Let's uh, there we go refresh that. What do I have now? Well, 4.75 is still my minimum. We know the actual, the, the, I'm sorry, 4.875 is now my minimum. And we're getting awfully close. Let's turn that off. And turn, highlight this one now. Okay, now just let's go back up and check. I know the minimum is 4.85, and right now I've got 4.875. I'm awfully close. Well, if I wanted to go one more step, I could. Um, now I know the minimum lives between 4.75 and 5, and that's my current estimate. I could cut this in half again to make delta x 0 0.0625, I guess, and insert another point there and another point there, and I can just keep going forever. Eventually, I get to the point where delta x is small enough I don't care anymore. I've, I've got as precise an answer as I need. So there's the... Uh, binary search algorithm. I've worked out the first four iterations. And now that you've seen these, you can work out more for yourself if you like. And you can also execute this same uh, set of instructions, same set of calculations, with any one-dimensional, uh, one-variable objective function you like.